Good morning, Lord's Church. Y'all are having so much fun talking to each other. Y'all are having so much Isn't fun talking to each other. Isn't it wonderful to be in the it family of so God? You cannot hear me? It is so, you cannot hear me? Okay, hold on, hold on. Don, can you Okay, hold me? on, hold on. Don, can you hear me now? Okay, everything is fine. Okay, everything is fine. What are you saying, Greg? What are you okay. saying, Greg? All is good. It okay. Is so good All is good. To be here in it is so good to be and here in the house of the Lord. Of and folks. you can see that we've lost a number of folks north. who have already and left us to go north. How many of you are and I want to know, how many of you are leaving this week? And Gina wants to know who you're sending to replace And Gina you. wants to know who you're sending to replace you. You cannot leave until you have a replacement. You cannot okay. leave until you have a replacement. God bless you. Okay. Have safe travels. God bless have you. Have a wonderful safe summer. Safe travels. Have a wonderful come summer back. and please please come back to us as quickly as possible. And the rest of us will be missed. We will carry And the rest of us in the name we of will Jesus carry on. In the name of Jesus we will carry on, won't we? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So May the fourth so and May the eighteenth. May the fourth are the and May the eighteenth are the last two days that we will be packing meals, meals, meals for kids help. pack. Please if you can help, please go at 9 a.m. on the 4th and the 18th, 4th and the 18th, 4th and the 18th, to Torgler's home. Alice Torgler's home. What's the address? 1028 Hook Lane. 1028 Hook Lane. 1028 Hook Lane. 9 a.m. It takes about it takes less than an hour to pack this food so food that the homeless children the can have food on the weekends when they do not have, meals at, do not have meals at school. Please, if you can help, um, let Alice know that you can be there. Okay, or just show up at nine o'clock on May the fourth and May the eighteenth. Your help is much needed, and this is a wonderful ministry that I've met the principal of the school. They are so appreciative of what we're doing. Okay, any other announcements? Those of you who are leaving, remember that you can, as you clean out your refrigerators, you can take any foodstuffs, partial containers, to Michelle, and she will take it to the mission. They will accept out-of-date items. They will accept uh, uh, partially used uh, kitchen uh, foods. Okay. All right. Any other announcements? Then let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we honor and we worship you. We are so grateful for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for those who have already left us and are now in their northern homes for the summer. We ask travel mercies for those who will be leaving us this week. Be gentle and kind to them, Father, as they travel. Travel's a little bit less fun as we get a little less young. So I, we just ask for travel mercies and that the summer times will be times of relaxation and they'll return to us restored and ready to come back to work for you here at Lake Henry. Father, we give you this service. We ask that you would speak to our hearts and our minds. We thank you for all those who are participating to bring this service to fruition. Thank you, Lord. And we give this all to you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
there. Can you hear me? Okay, now you can. Please join me in the call to worship. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know me, and I sit down, and then I rise. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. The word is on my tongue. Behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. O God, who gives to those who ask, provide for each of us in your way a special gift to be used for your glory and for the good of our neighbors. O God, who reveals to those who seek, show us this day what these gifts are and how they may be used. O God, who opens the, to those who knock, help us to step forward now into your gracious presence, knowing that we are each and all blessed with something special to share. One more thing, Lord, stir us up so that we don't become too self-satisfied and forget to keep asking and seeking and knocking. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Good morning, Lord's Church. Let's all stand and we're going to praise and worship our Lord this morning. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Lord, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want
Thank you, Jesus. Was that not the reading? God, open the eyes of my heart. Thank you. And this is a time in our worship service where we'll bring our joys, our concerns, our praises to our Lord. So let's be in prayer, and I'll give you an opportunity to lift names of those that you desire prayer for. Let us pray. Father, we are here because we want to see you. We want to see your power and your love. And we want to praise you. We want to praise you for your creation, for everyone sitting here in this room, for all the blessings you have given us in our life here on earth and the promises of life for all eternity through your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, may we never forget that wonderful gift of forgiveness for the times we fail you. And when we're honest, we know there are times that we have not said and done the things that you've called us to say and do. And we confess that. And we know in your great love and mercy, we are forgiven. And you remember our sins no more. What an added added blessing that is for each of us. Father, we lift up names to you this morning of those that we would like to have prayed for. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers. You know the needs of those folks that we have named either audibly or in our minds. Just bless each and every one of them with your presence and assurance that you are with them in their struggles, in their illnesses, financial problems, physical problems, whatever it might be. But give them your peace. Most of all, Father, give them peace and assurance. You're the one in control. And Father, we confess that sometimes it's hard for us to understand and it's hard for us to accept because we too like to be in control. But we know you are the great creator and the great healer. Father, there are uh, many opportunities in our world today. We just pray for the leaders all over for the conflicts that are going on um, for the greed, the list goes on and on, Father. We just pray for your divine intervention. We pray, too, that you nudge us when we can help in some of these areas, when we can be peacemakers and not troublemakers. Father, we ask your divine guidance for each of us and for our church here, for the Lord's church, and our churches everywhere be with the leadership. Father, put your ring of protection around those who care for us, the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs, the police, the firefighters, our military, most of all, our military too. So bless them and protect them. Now, Father, we thank you for that great prayer that your son has given us as we pray it now. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and 
to give us our suffering. Help me to give those who suffer our pain. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. As we sing an old faithful hymn, Fairest Lord Jesus. This morning I woke up and I had put the uh, Kayla radio on and there was a, probably a large amount of people singing glory and honor to the Lord Jesus. And just, it was just like, wow. We are in an outpouring of God's grace and his Holy Spirit. People are coming to Jesus like by the droves. I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you go on and just search anything, there's so much going on in the world with crusades and um, other events that by the hundreds of thousands people are coming to the Lord on a daily basis. Just for one thing close to us, one of the churches in Tampa, they have a um, class that teaches people how to go out and evangelize. From January to March in 2019, they had um, like not maybe a thousand people. In this year, from January to March, they had 30,000 decisions 
made for Jesus, evangelizing out on the streets in different things, different different areas. So God is on the move. We get to be a part of that movement. God has blessed us so tremendously. Anthony. Anthony. God has blessed us so tremendously in his gifts to us. And so now it's our opportunity to give back to him so it can be used through our community and throughout the world. Please, um, ushers, would you come and wait upon us for the offering? how you enrich our lives. And we ask now that you would take these offerings, that you would multiply them, that you would give us wisdom in how to distribute them so that they could be used to further your kingdom. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God From all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so so good With every breath that I am able Oh I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God, yeah. And 
All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able For I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. Amen. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. God's people could say amen to those words. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Gina. Please join me in prayer. Father, I ask now that the words of my mouth might be acceptable to you, that the words that you've given me will be heard by your people for instruction, for encouragement, that as we go from this place, we can say that we have been in the presence of God and we know that he loves us and sees us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, I know it's early this morning, but I have a couple questions for you. When you wake up in the middle of the night and you are afraid, do you feel alone? When you receive that dreaded phone call with bad news, when trouble knocks at your door, when everything seems to be going wrong in your life, do you feel abandoned? Do you sometimes think that yours is the only house that the cloud seems to hang over? If you can say yes to some of these, you're right up there. You're in my wheelhouse. Because these are human responses. We are tempted to stay in these dark places, to wrap ourselves in a cloak of despair, to break out the tub of ice cream, 
and eat away our sorrows or follow other self-destructive behaviors. After all, where is the hope that will, things will get any better? We ask, where is God if he cares so much for me? He must be off on vacation because he's certainly not taking care of my needs. We ask, does God see or care about me? And then we feel ashamed of our weakness, don't we? But we hunger for some sign that he knows what we're going through and that we are not alone. The title of my message this morning is The God Who Sees. And we want to know if that's true. Longing to be noticed, affirmed, and loved in our suffering is a human need. If that longing is not satisfied, we become less than ourselves. We shrivel inside and we shrink away from other people. Now God has given us many examples of people in scripture who have experienced mistreatment and suffering. In Genesis 16, we read about Hagar, a slave to Abram's wife, Sarah. Remember God's promise to Abram that his followers, his children, uh, would exceed the stars, that he would be the father of many nations? There was only one problem. Abram and Sarah were old, and Sarah was impatient. So she took matters into her own hands and gave Hagar to Abram. The result was a pregnancy for Hagar, intense jealousy for Sarah. Hagar looked upon Sarah with contempt, and Sarah mistreated Hagar in return. What did Abram do? What a lot of men do. Ignored the situation left the women to their own devices to solve their problems. Hagar ran away to a well in the desert. There, Hagar was visited by an angel of the Lord who assured her of God's protection and promised Hagar her descendants would be too numerous to count. What happens next is extraordinary. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are the God who sees. For she said, have I not also here seen him who sees me? Therefore, the well was called Be'ar Lor Roy. Hagar, a slave of no worth, who had no control of her body or her life, is the only person in the Old Testament to give God a name. El Roy, the God of seeing. Be'er Lo Roy literally means the well of the living one, my seer. If you read further in Genesis, you'll learn that Hagar bore a son named Ishmael. When Sarah finally had a son, Isaac, she demanded that Hagar and Ishmael be sent away. Ishmael became the leader of the tribe that would become Muslims. Now an example in the New Testament of the God who sees is when Jesus met a Samaritan woman by a well. Another well. Isn't that interesting? It was inappropriate for Jesus to speak with her for several reasons. Jews did not associate with Samaritans. She was a woman. Because she came to the well at noon rather than early in the day tells us that she was despised by her own people. Yet her encounter with Jesus is another example of how God sees and knows the circumstances of someone's life and offers a better way. 
If you read further in John 4, you will see that Jesus knew this woman was an outcast living in sin, and yet he saw her and offered her the living water of eternal life. In our own pain and sorrow, we're tempted to say, yes, but. Yes, but an angel of the Lord has not appeared to me, not in my desert, has not seen me. Yes, but. Jesus has not appeared at my will, has not told me how my life can be changed. So what assurances can we have that God cares about us that he has not abandoned us to the suffering of this world. In our human frailty, we sometimes forget that as children of God, as Christians, we are Easter people. We celebrate resurrection. We know the promises of God for eternal life. But suffering is real. And sometimes the world looks more like Good Friday than Easter Sunday. We, the community of believers, is called to be Christ Easter hope in a Good Friday world. We can do that by sharing the following truths we can rely on to know God cares deeply for us. Number one, He sees us. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The same God that Hagar and the woman at the well encountered is the same God who sees us today. We can draw comfort from knowing we are under his care and how involved He is in the details of our lives. He sees us as no human can. Now there's comfort and there's warning in that. If we are in Christ, his caring is heart deep. Unfortunately, those who refuse Christ will remain dead in their sin and will suffer God's judgment. Number two, He chose us. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So our purpose in life is to proclaim the good news about Jesus Christ to others. We are redeemed and restored children of God. He chose us to be a part of his redemptive plan for mankind. Listen to his promise. We are appointed to bear fruit. If we do, whatever we ask in Christ's name, the Father will give. Number three. He knows us. Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? These are the words of the Samaritan woman when she went to tell others about her encounter with Jesus. He knew everything about her, even the shameful parts. Aren't there things in our lives we hope no one else can see? But you know, the Lord knows all of our secrets, all our shame, all our sins. Still, he went to the cross for each one of us because he loved us and he was the only one who could save us. There's a comfort somehow in knowing we can't hide from God. That allows us to be honest with him he already knows everything about us. He already demonstrated his love at Calvary. So we know 
He's never going to abandon us. Number four, he hears us. The righteous cries out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. We cry out to God when we are grieving, losing hope, worried about tomorrow, exhausted by being a caregiver. When we have nowhere else to go but fall on our knees before him. He sees us. He hears us. He is a living God who responds to the cries from our hearts. Throughout scripture, God never abandoned his people. He heard their cries. He sent his son. One day, one day, all suffering will end. God will make all things new, and sin and death will be abolished. Until that day, take heart. Cry out to the God who hears you. Number five, he speaks to us. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That includes women. So that we can be equipped for every good work. Unfortunately, we cannot physically see God. But Jesus shows us what God is like. By studying scripture and obeying the leading of the Holy Spirit, we can know God's will for us. We have a personal God who speaks to us through his word and through the Holy Spirit. We are not left alone. And finally, he saves us. But God demonstrates his own love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died in our place, bore the weight of our sin, was separated from God. And in the end, our Lord said these words, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Jesus sacrificed himself so we could be restored in relationship with God. We don't have to fear the power of sin because the free gift that cost Christ so much has been given to us. All we need is faith to believe. The real longing of our hearts to be known and seen for who we are can only be fully met and satisfied in knowing Jesus. Otherwise, there's always going to be a hole. He sees us and he understands us. But what does he see? If I ask you this morning, what does God see when he looks at you? How would you answer? Think about that. How does God see you? What does he see when he sees you? What descriptive word comes to your mind? Is it derogatory or complimentary? Is your answer what you believe he would see or what you hope he would see? I would suggest to you this morning the answer is the same for each believer in this room. When God sees us, he sees He sees in us his beloved son. He sees the blood that was shed by Jesus on the cross. He doesn't esteem us 
because of our good deeds, nor does he measure us according to our imperfections. Knowing how God looks at us can help how we look at ourselves and at others. To know we are completely accepted and unconditionally loved by God should make all the difference in how we live our lives, no matter the circumstances, no matter the suffering, no matter the pain we have to face. We are seen by our God. May we, like Hagar, affirm, I have now seen the one who sees me. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus, choosing to follow him in response to all that he has done in his love for us. Let's choose to be Easter people each day of the year. And let's look for ways to remind others who are experiencing their own Good Friday that there is a God who sees them. Amen. And now Shirley's going to sing for us. The creator of the universe, the maker of my soul, you see me. The God most high, the savior of the world, you see me. Every affliction in distress of my soul the deepest of struggles that no one else knows you hear every cry and you bottle each tear you are the God who sees me When my faith is dim and fear comes creeping in, you see me. I can trust in you. My times are in your hands. You see me. Every affliction in distress of my soul the deepest of struggles that no one else knows you hear every cry and you bottle each tear you are the god who sees me you search me and you've known me you've seen me and still you love me you are lord and you i will trust you are the god who sees me you've searched me 
creator of the universe, maker of my soul. Amen. I'm praising God that Shirley and Steve are not snowbirds. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, for sending them this way. So much talent. Thank you, Lord. And I know they give God the glory for their talent. Amen. Let's bind us together. Let's stand and sing. Bind us together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God. last time. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with love. And for those of you who are leaving this week, you're bound together with us. You're not leaving us. You're still with us because we are one body, as that song says. And now, may the blessings of our Lord, may the God who sees us go with you through your days. May you take that knowledge and share it with others that the world may know that there is, not, there is hope in the midst of pain and suffering. There is hope in a God who sees. Amen. And now we're going to join together. That was beautiful. God is so good. So good, he's so good to me. He cares for us. He cares for us. He cares for us. He cares for us. He's so good to me. And all those together gathered here today in one body, said, Amen, Amen. and keep smiling. <laughs>